Oh, what a mess. This is Neil Schneider. Welcome back to my messy basement. We're continuing our guide. If you got to this point, you've already learned about virtual reality on mobile. You've learned about virtual reality on console in particular on the PlayStation. Now we're going to learn about virtual reality on PC, which is arguably the ultimate form of virtual reality and it's available at retail right now. So there's two solutions. There's the Oculus Rift. I should, there's not just two, there's other solutions as well, but these are the solutions that are readily available today. There's the Oculus Rift, and then there's the HTC Vive, okay? Now, let's, I'm gonna to speak to the Oculus Rift first. These are the basic specifications. If you recall, early in our, in our guide, we talked about resolution. The more resolution you have, the more realistic the, in, the imagery can and, and will be. So the Oculus Rift has a resolution of 12, excuse me, 2160 by 1200 pixels or 1080 by 1200 pixels per eye, which is actually quite a bit, okay? I mean, especially for a consumer product. Just to put this in perspective, just a couple years ago, um, you know, the traditional resolution was maybe 800 by 600 in the high end, 1280 by 720 pixels in the super high end. So you know, having a resolution like this at a consumer level is amazing. So there's a lot of excitement behind that. Field of view is 110 degrees. Field of view I'm referring to, uh, like we naturally see about 170 degrees field of view. So the, the Oculus Rift is offering 110 degrees field of view, which is something else. It used to be solutions offered maybe 45 degrees. So it's really something else that we have that immersive field of view available to us. Another feature, integrated audio. You don't need to get surround sound speakers. It comes with headphones built in. And the way the software is driven, the way the audio is driven to these headphones is you get this 360 degree experience. You really can hear things behind you, in front of you, all around you. And you don't need surround sound speakers to achieve that. Um, uh, so let's see what else does it include. So uh, separate from the head mounted display, you also get an Xbox controller, which you will be using. It comes with this mini controller that it, you know, is primarily used for navigating the, the Oculus uh, store service, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, so it's really a full package. Oh, and also you get the, the uh, infrared camera. And you're, you know, this is actually important because it's what's responsible for the tracking of the head mounted display. So that not only does it know how it's rotating, but it knows how it's physically positioned. So you get, you get that full positional tracking and, and it captures every nuance, which, which in itself was uh, impressive. So um, some things that I, I really like about the, the, the Oculus Rift head mounted display is one thing is it's got a little uh, light sensor. So it will automatically know whether or not you're wearing the head mounted display and, and turn itself on and off accordingly. So it's, you know, it's just nice to know that when you put this on your desk, it's not wasting electricity or keeping a display on when it's not necessary to do so. Um, again, I mentioned the headphones. I really like that. You don't need to get extra speakers to make this work and, and to be effective. Um, if we look at the adjustments, I thought this was a nice touch. So you'll see that there's a, a strap on top, straps on the side, but there's also this spring action. Okay, and the reason that's important is once you have it adjusted, you could easily take this on and off almost like a hat without having to readjust every time. The exception to the rule is if you, you know, if you want someone else to try this out, then yeah, they have to adjust it. But uh, honestly, we're not going to be sharing our head mounted displays, are we? It's more of our own personal toys here. So uh, another feature that I like, if we look at the lenses, okay, they are, uh, you know, it's very important that the imagery that we get out of the head mounted display is going into our eyes directly. The more lined up, the better. And what I, you know, I like what Oculus did in this case is they have a little slider here. And what happens is during the setup, you're shown an image. And what you do is you adjust the slider until that image is crystal clear. And then what they do is that knowing this, I mean, the lenses are, are physically adjusted and the software is adjusted so that you're getting the best image possible. If, if they didn't have that, what you'd need to do is you'd have to somehow measure your interpupillary distance and, uh, and manually enter it in. And this is 
really a much more convenient way without you having to call your optometrist. So I thought that was, that was a nice touch. Um, and speaking of setup, all in all, I thought the setup was really easy. I thought that was a nice touch too. Like if, if you don't know the first thing about virtual reality, it doesn't matter. You're going to sit down, provided you're, you've got a modern computer and it meets the specs, you literally follow the steps. And as you follow the steps, you'll learn about the device as well. So I thought that was really nicely done. Uh, as far as the, the use of the device, I think the positional tracking is excellent. I think the, the implementation that they have delivers. I, th I thought that the head mounted display itself was, was comfortable to wear. I've used it for, for uh, extended lengths of time without any, any problems to speak of. Um, now, this is just the head mounted display. Okay, so when you buy the Oculus Rift, again, you're getting the head mounted display, you're getting the sensor, you're getting the, the, the Xbox uh, controller, and of course the secondary controller, which I discussed earlier. However, okay, this holiday season, Oculus is releasing what they call the touch controller. So if you recall, interaction is very important, and until now they haven't had that interaction capability. Now, as far as the touch controllers themselves, I've tried them at earlier events, okay? But I don't, I don't personally own them yet. So, uh, I, I mean, they're on pre-order, so I don't personally own them yet. I, I can only speak from earlier experiences. So I can tell you for certain that they work. Um, however, what I did do was I researched other reviews, and what I found is many of them, a lot of them rate them maybe a little better or on par. Like It's, it's a matter of... of opinion um, but uh, what I would say is it's it's pretty much on par with what their competitor does with what HTC Vive does except it's different okay so that's that's what I how I describe that or how others have described that and then I'll support that when I get them if I have a really dramatic difference of opinion I'll share but for now I'd say that they're pretty much on par with what the other solutions offer it's just different now if you're looking at the pricing uh, to just buy the Oculus Rift on its own, uh, you know, just the core model, you're looking at $850 Canadian, $600 US. Once you add the touch controller, so once you have that interactivity, it's an additional $280 Canadian or $200 US funds. Now, something that they are introducing is room scale support, which means that you could physically walk around the room. Uh, and in order to do that, you need to buy an additional camera, so the, which is $108 Canadian and $80 US. So just so you know, the first camera it comes with the Oculus Rift by default. When you get the, the touch controllers, they come with their own camera, so you get a second camera. And then if you want that room scale capability, you need to get that third camera. So there you go. So that's the, that's the Oculus Rift solution. Again, very impressive. Next, the HTC Vive. So, the HTC Vive, they're actually, I think they're actually using the same display. It's, it's it, like the same display panel. It's 2160 by 1200 pixels, so same resolution as the Oculus Rift we talked about earlier. But one thing that really stood out with the HTC Vive at the moment of release is it includes the HTC Vive controllers. So right out of the box, you get that full interactivity with your virtual reality experiences. The other thing it includes are two, uh, they call them lighthouse base stations. And you need to mount these on your wall or use uh, lighting stands. They have to go at opposite ends and it comes with two of them. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about the science in a different part of the guide, but really what they do is they emit laser light and, and uh, the, what the Vive does is it detects the light and it's based on that that it determines its exact positioning. And the same goes for, for the Vive controllers. Um, very impressive, okay, it actually comes the software support, uh, in the case of Oculus it comes with Lucky's Tale, in the case of the HTC Vive it comes with the lab, which is really a sampling of different virtual reality experiences put out by Valve. Um, as far as what do I like about the, about the HTC Vive, well, for certain I really like that it's a complete bundle. You, you know, you open the box and you literally have everything that you need, not just to have a great virtual reality experience, but also for that interaction as well. Um, so I thought that was very good. The tracking is excellent. Once you have the, the, lighting, the lighthouse stations properly set up, it picks up every nuance. Um, the software is really uh, well thought out. Okay, so it, it, this, the, 
the setup is somewhat more complex than what I had to do with the Oc which with what I did with the Oculus Rift. However, um, there's good reason for that because with the HTC Vive does I mentioned earlier about the Oculus Rift uh, having room scale. If you add that extra camera, well, the HTC Vive you know, out of the box has room scale. So you, you know, so what it does is it has to set up your room accordingly. So it knows where you're walking in the room and that you're not actually bumping into, accidentally bumping into furniture or walls. Um, another feature, I should have brought this up, which is unique to the HTC Vive, is it has a front facing camera. And they're still discovering what to actually do with this camera. They put it in there. I don't even think they knew what they wanted to do with it. They just knew that they wanted it there. But immediately, uh, it, it benefited them, especially for room scale, because one of the features that they have is two things. First off, when you walk around the room, and my understanding is it's going to be similar or the same thing with the Oculus, is it knows where you are in the space and will put up a digital wall to let you know that you're not bumping into something. But what they also did with the camera in the case of the HTC Vive is if you get close to objects or to wires, you'll start to see the outlines of those objects and wires in your experience. It's not distracting, but it's enough to let you know so that you, you don't accidentally trip on something. And I thought that was a very important uh, safety feature, especially for our room scale experience. Now, things that I didn't care for quite as much, uh, there is an interpupillary distance adjustment. It's a little knob on the side. Uh, you need to know your IPD, okay? And the way you measure that is with a ruler in front of a mirror. You could you could probably look up, you know, there's special rulers that you could download on the internet, uh, you know, if you ever want to buy glasses over the internet, or maybe your optometrist willing to share with you what your IPD adjustment is. Um, it's relatively easy to get a, a clear image on this and to adjust uh, properly. However, I, you know, I must I, I must say that in the case of Oculus, it was much easier to set up your IPD than it was with the HTC Vive. Uh, also, the setup is more involved. Okay, it's not just about you know putting a, a sensor on your desk and you're good to go. In the case of the HTC Vive, I mean, I had to. I have two lighthouse stations, literally. Uh, I wouldn't say nailed, but they're screwed into the wall. Uh, another option is I could have bought lighting kits. Okay, but that's an additional expense. You know, it could be fifty bucks a lighting kit, depending on you know where you buy and, and the quality. When I'm saying lighting kits, I mean lighting stands. That's actually what I meant to say. But the point is, it is a more involved setup. Okay, but once you're set up your setup. There's, there's some permanence to it. Um, also, and we're going to talk about this a little later, is if you do choose to go the room scale route, it's a bigger commitment. It's a commitment of space. And I don't, I'm not sure everyone really appreciates what that commitment is. We're going to talk about that a little later. Um, keep in mind though, with the HTC Vive, you do not have to do room scale. You can just do like a standard seated experience. It's designed to support that as well. But you know, come on, if you're, you know, when you have a vibe, when you have a setup like this, you want to do that room scale. So just, just be aware of what the commitments are. As far as uh, the pricing for the full kit, I mean, controllers, the base stations, the whole kit and caboodle, you're looking at $1,150 Canadian, or if, you know, I like to round up, otherwise $1,149, okay, but I like to round out to $1,150 Canadian or $800 US, but again, it's for the full kit. So if, if we're gonna compare both the HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift with each having the full room scale experience, so in the case of the Oculus, you'd be looking at $1,238 Canadian. In the case of the Vive, you're looking at $1,150 Canadian. So uh, for now, at least the Oculus is $88 more in Canadian funds for that, you know, that full comparative experience. Uh, in U.S. funds, the Oculus $880 U.S., uh, the Vibes $800 U.S., so it's only, it's like, again, it's about $80 between the two that the Oculus is a bit more expensive. So what's my recommendation? You know, as far as, as choosing one or the other, really the most important thing you can do is to try before you buy. I mean, it, I, I can't, I can't say that enough. Okay. I mean, it, whatever people say about the touch or the vibe controllers, whatever people say about how comfortable it is, really, you need to try it before making a purchase like this. 
Now, in the case of uh, the HTC Vive, uh, they are on regular display at the Microsoft stores. There's Microsoft stores all over Canada and the U.S. And uh, from what I've seen, you just you you don't have to call. I would recommend calling in advance just to make sure they have it, you know, going. But I'm I'm told they have it going around the clock, and uh, so that's one way to try out the HTC Vive. In the case of the Oculus Rift. Their primary partner is Best Buy. There are a number of Best Buys that have um, them on display. The, cat, the thing is you, you often need to set up a, an appointment in advance. Uh, my advice is call first, okay? Make sure that the Best Buy has it on display uh, and there is a map provided. I'm gonna provide those links for both the Microsoft Store and the uh, Best Buy demo stations in the guide as well. So you really, there are opportunities to try this stuff out. Now, as far as my personal opinion, if I had to choose one or the other, which one would I ultimately choose? Well, in my, you know, I think it's very obvious. I would choose.